Welcome back to another chance for us to take a deeper dive into the text from our previous Sunday. This past Sunday, we had the story, the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, we also talked about possible other titles for this story, but we looked at identifying with both the younger son being the one who's gone off and gotten into trouble and needed to come home and also identifying with the older brother, which again, I heard from many of you uh, after worship on Sunday, uh, many folks were able to identify easily with the older brother because of their, uh, their birth order and their uh, families of origin. Um, I wanna think a little bit more today about that elder brother. Um, you know, uh, the, the truth is that the father ends up coming out to get him as well. You know, in the story, it says the elder brother came close to the house and heard all the merrymaking going on and calls one of the servants and says, what's going on? And the servant says, oh, your, your brother's home. This is so exciting. We're having a big celebration. The father actually comes out to that elder son. And the thing that I want to pay attention to about that is that it, it shows that the father meets the elder son where he is. And if we are going to continue thinking about the Father in terms of God and our relationship with God, that tells us that God meets us where we are as well. And the Father wants to bring him into the circle and is inviting him to join the party, to come be part of the celebration the father really tries to get the elder son to see things from a different perspective. You know, the son saw life with the father as unrewarding drudgery, but the father's view is that the joy of having had his elder son with him every day is something that is absolutely fabulous. That brought great joy to him. So we've got two different perspectives there of drudgery and of joy. You know, the father ends his conversation with this older brother using language that really echoes the earlier stories in scripture of the lost sheep and the lost coin, or the found sheep and the found coin, whichever way you want to think of it. And he says, but we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. So what happens here is that really in this story, in this parable, the father invites both sons, each of whom were lost in different ways, back to the house, invites them to come home. But this parable ends without us knowing what the elder son's response is to this invitation. Is he going to stay outside and sulk? Is he going to pout or pitch some sort of a hissy fit? Or is he going to go inside and embrace the grace that has been offered? And is he going to participate in the celebration, be part of the party that's being thrown? So really, it's up to us to finish this story in our minds. We are given the opportunity to think about how it's going to go, what's going to be happening uh, at the ending of this story. The reality for us is that God's grace is foolish. This party, this extravagant celebration that the Father hosts is foolish. It's extravagant. And God always bids us come home. We want to embrace what we know about that, that God always wants us to be home. God always reaches out for us. God always welcomes us back and wants us to be part of the family Remember that God is always about reconciliation and not cancellation and rebuke. So we don't know how this story ends. We don't know 
what this elder son is going to do, what perspective he's going to take. Is he going to continue thinking, you know, I've had no joy in my life. I've just done all this work. Everything's been required for me after day after day after day. Or is he going to sort of accept that foolish and extravagant grace that his father is extending not only to his younger son, but to him as well? In this Lenten season, as we continue our journey towards the cross, may we never cease to be amazed at the extent of God's foolish grace the ways in which God reaches out to us and calls us and bids us come home. And may we always be looking for home wherever we are, in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. And may we rejoice at God's foolish grace, his extravagant grace for us. Amen.